ISS Tiangong Vast, Axiom, Orbital Reef, Star Lab. The race for humanity's orbital home is heating up. But who's missing? SpaceX has stayed quiet about space stations. Or have they? SpaceX is secretly planning something far more ambitious. Transforming Starship into a rotating gravity station that could solve space travel's biggest challenge. How does a rocket become a space station with real gravity? Let's dive right in. Starship isn't just reshaping how we launch payloads. It's redefining what's possible once we get to orbit. This 50-meter tall, 9-meter wide behemoth represents the largest transport system ever built for space operations. But here's where things get interesting. What if Starship didn't just deliver cargo to a space station? What if it became the station itself? The concept is surprisingly straightforward. Launch a Starship, strip out the propellant tanks, outfit it with life support systems, and you've got an instant orbital habitat. The numbers are staggering. Even using just the upper 22 meters of habitable space, SpaceX could create roughly 1,100 to 1,200 cubic meters of usable volume. That's already matching the entire International Space Station from a single launch. But that's the baseline scenario. When you're designing Starship purely as a station module rather than a rocket stage, the constraints disappear. Remove those massive propellant tanks, reinforce the structure, expand the pressurized sections. Version 3. Starship at 52 meters tall, over 3,300 cubic meters. Version 4 at 61 meters, a massive 3,800 cubic meters. And we're still talking about one module. Now here's the real breakthrough. SpaceX isn't planning to stop at one. The vision involves dozens of starships arranged in a wheel configuration, all rotating around a central hub. Why does this matter? Because rotation solves humanity's oldest problem in space, the absence of gravity. Traditional space stations like the ISS have taught us hard lessons. Astronauts lose bone density at roughly 1% to 2% per month. Muscle mass deteriorates despite hours of daily exercise. The cardiovascular system weakens. The human body simply wasn't designed for prolonged weightlessness. After six months in orbit, astronauts need weeks of rehabilitation just to walk normally again. This isn't sustainable for Mars missions lasting years or permanent orbital settlements. SpaceX's rotating station changes everything. As the wheel spins, centrifugal force pushes outward against the outer modules, creating artificial gravity ranging from 0.3 g to full Earth gravity, depending on rotation speed and diameter. The beauty of using Starship is scale. Each module is enormous, and the overall wheel diameter could exceed anything previously attempted. Why does diameter matter? because larger radius means slower rotation for the same gravity level. This is critical for human comfort. Smaller rotating stations must spin rapidly, causing severe motion sickness and disorientation. The Coriolis effect becomes unbearable. Turn your head and the world seems to twist sideways. But a massive starship-based wheel rotates so slowly that occupants barely notice the spin. The experience feels natural, stable, almost like standing on Earth. Elon Musk himself has confirmed SpaceX is pursuing this path. He stated directly that Starship will incorporate rotation during Mars missions. Starship will have a small spin on the way to Mars. Even a tiny gravity vector is better than none. If they can implement partial gravity for interplanetary transit, scaling up to a full rotating station becomes not just possible, but inevitable. The health implications are profound. With restored gravity, bone density loss essentially stops. Muscles maintain mass naturally through daily movement rather than exhausting exercise regimens. Cardiovascular systems remain healthy. Astronauts could potentially live in orbit for years without the debilitating effects we see today on the ISS. This extends mission durations, reduces crew rotation frequency, cuts costs dramatically, and opens entirely new possibilities for long-term research. But the benefits extend beyond health. Daily life transforms completely. Eating becomes normal. No floating food pouches or liquid meals through straws. Showers work like on Earth. Bathrooms function without complex suction systems. Sleep happens in actual beds rather than sleeping bags velcroed to walls. 
These seemingly mundane improvements matter enormously for psychological well-being during years-long missions. For researchers, artificial gravity enables experiments impossible in microgravity. Chemical processes, biological studies, material science all become more predictable and controllable. The station could host manufacturing operations that require gravity, potentially producing goods for both orbital use and return to Earth. The economic case is equally compelling. Traditional station modules cost hundreds of millions or billions of dollars each. They require specialized manufacturing, exotic materials, and expensive dedicated launch vehicles. Starship flips this model completely. Built from cost-efficient stainless steel using mass production techniques, each module costs a fraction of traditional alternatives. And since Starship launches itself, deployment costs plummet. This makes expansion practical. Adding new modules, upgrading systems, scaling capacity becomes economically viable rather than prohibitively expensive. Now let's step inside one of these modules. The interior layout maximizes the enormous volume available. Starting from the bottom section, the area farthest from the command deck serves as storage and utilities. Tools, equipment, scientific instruments, spare parts. Essential systems like power distribution and water management occupy this zone. Moving up, we reach the dining area and communal spaces. But this isn't the cramped galley of the ISS. The volume allows for actual tables, comfortable seating, and here's something remarkable, hydroponic gardens. Growing fresh vegetables in orbit isn't just supplemental nutrition, it's psychological therapy. The smell of soil, watching plants grow, harvesting fresh tomatoes. These connections to Earth matter deeply during long-term isolation. The fitness zone comes next, equipped with advanced exercise equipment. Even with artificial gravity, maintaining peak physical condition requires dedicated training. Treadmills, weight machines, rowing stations, all designed to function in the rotating environment. Adjacent bathrooms provide convenience between workout sessions and daily routines. Sleeping quarters offer genuine privacy, individual cabins with sound insulation, personal storage, and comfortable sleeping arrangements. Not sleeping bags attached to walls, but actual beds in actual rooms. This privacy is crucial for mental health during months or years in close quarters with the same crew. Near the nose sits the observation area with large windows offering stunning views of Earth. This isn't just aesthetic. Visual connection to our home planet helps combat the psychological isolation of space. This zone also serves as collaborative workspace for team activities and research planning. At the very top, the command center manages navigation, communications, and system diagnostics. This is mission control for the entire module equipped with the latest technology for coordinating operations across what could eventually become a city-sized facility. That's one Starship module, already surpassing the ISS in capacity and capability. But multiply this by dozens of modules in the rotating configuration, and you're looking at humanity's first true orbital city. Specialized modules could focus entirely on research, agriculture, manufacturing, or habitation. The possibilities scale exponentially. Of course, enormous challenges remain. Constructing this system requires massive engineering effort and financial investment. Initiating rotation demands extremely powerful thrusters. The initial spin-up represents a major technical hurdle. Maintaining stable rotation over years presents ongoing challenges. Connecting multiple modules with cables while spinning introduces structural complexities that have never been attempted. Yet these are engineering problems, not physics problems. And if there's one thing SpaceX has proven, it's their ability to solve supposedly impossible engineering challenges. While others talk about concepts, SpaceX builds hardware. While competitors design PowerPoint presentations, SpaceX launches missions. The contrast with competitors is striking. Russia recently unveiled plans for their Russian orbital station built by repurposing decades-old ISS modules. They're literally planning to detach their aging segment around 2030 and call it a new station. These modules have suffered repeated air leaks and are contaminated with decades of accumulated bacteria and fungi. The U.S. is wisely abandoning these relics, transitioning instead to modern commercial stations built from scratch. Meanwhile, China upgrades their technologically advanced Tiangong station, 
NASA partners with commercial companies like Axiom and Vast for next-generation facilities. And SpaceX quietly plans something that makes everything else look obsolete, a rotating artificial gravity station at unprecedented scale. The question isn't whether SpaceX will attempt this. The question is when. So what does all this mean for humanity's future in space? For decades, we've accepted that living in orbit means sacrificing our health, enduring cramped conditions, and counting down the days until return to Earth. The ISS, remarkable as it is, represents a compromise. We tolerate the hardships because the science is worth it. SpaceX's rotating Starship station isn't a compromise. It's a declaration that we can actually live in space, not just survive there. Artificial gravity, spacious habitats, fresh food growing in orbit, these aren't luxuries. They're necessities for permanent human presence beyond Earth. The implications extend far beyond one station. Master artificial gravity in Earth orbit, and suddenly Mars becomes truly viable. The nine-month journey becomes manageable when astronauts arrive healthy rather than weaken. Lunar bases become practical long-term homes rather than temporary outposts. We're watching the transition from the space age to the space settlement era, while others repurpose decades-old hardware or build traditional modules. SpaceX is engineering the future. And knowing their track record, landing rockets, building Starlink, developing Starship, betting against them seems unwise. The race to build humanity's orbital home isn't just heating up. SpaceX might have already won it. They just haven't announced the victory yet. What's your take on this gravity station concept? Could this be operational by 2030? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this breakdown valuable, hit that like button and share it with space enthusiasts who need to see this. And subscribe to Space Update 24 hours. We're tracking every development in SpaceX's journey to make us a multiplanetary species. There's a lot more coming. Russia once joked that NASA should use a trampoline to reach the ISS. Now their Soyuz launch facility is destroyed, and they can't fly their own crews anymore. Instead of payback, NASA ramped up SpaceX Dragon missions, delivering cargo to Russian modules and rotating cosmonauts. It's brilliant strategy wrapped in cooperation. Why help when you could walk away? Is Russia planning to leave the ISS sooner than expected? Let's dive right in. November 27, 2025 started like any other day at Baikonur Cosmodrome. Then everything changed. Launch Site 31, the only facility capable of sending Soyuz spacecraft to the ISS, suffered catastrophic damage. The details remain classified, but the impact is crystal clear. Russia's primary access to space just went dark. Roscosmos moved fast to control the narrative. Deputy Director Dmitry Baranov appeared confident, 